So today we're going to be talking about the simplest methods to type Pinion on Windows or Mac. If you open your internet browser and navigate to pinyontones.com, you will enter their website where you can download an installer. You need to check whether your operating system is 32-bit or 64-bit. So to do that, press the Windows key and the pause or pause break key simultaneously. This will bring up system information. So you can see here whether you're 32-bit or 64-bit. So my friend Mel's laptop who I'm using, he's 64-bit. Just click to download the 64-bit package and open it. It will install instantly. Once installed, you can navigate to the bottom right-hand corner where there's an ENG, which stands for English, or whatever your native language is. You can click into this and afterwards, down below under Japanese, you'll see Pinion Tones. This is Japanese simply to avoid a bug that the developer faced to do with fonts. So you can totally ignore the fact that it's Japanese. It works for Chinese. So now we have changed our keyboard to Pinion Tones. This acts slightly different to normal English, as we'll find out later. There's another way to access this a bit more quickly instead of clicking around, which is really useful when you're swapping between English and Pinion. If you're on Windows 10 or 8, then you can press the Windows key and the space bar, and this will pop up, and you can just toggle through to select Japanese pinion tones. If you're on Windows 7 or Vista, it's the Alt and the Shift key to switch between these different input types. If you have trouble installing pinion tones, you can just navigate to the links here and read through the guide. So this video was made to complement interactive subtitles, which is a new way of learning Chinese that we've developed based on my own experiences in making films on this channel. Decided to take the uh, railway. So by watching and interacting with YouTube videos, you'll be able to improve your reading, writing, listening, and even speaking. If you're subscribed, you can hit the bell notification or you can join our email club using the link down below. That way you'll be told exactly when these interactive subtotals are released. We'll go ahead and type ni hao. Ni hao has two third tones. So what we're actually going to be typing is ni three hao three and you'll see that it applies the tone to the syllable that you type the number after. So if we go ahead and swap our input to pinion tones and do the same thing, you can see it adds the tones nicely for us. Just press enter and it will finish off. This works the same way for all the other tones. So if you hit one afterwards, you'll get the first tone, two afterwards, you'll get the second tone, three, as we've just demonstrated, and four afterwards will give you the fourth tone. The really handy thing is you don't have to worry about where to put the tone. Pinion Tones does this for you automatically, but there is a really simple rule. When we think about A, E, I, O, U, and U in the alphabet, that's how we learn vowels, right? Well, actually in Pinion, whenever there's a tone, it goes over the first in this sequence. So that if there's an A in the syllable, the Pinion Tone will always go over the A. It takes priority over anything else. Uh, you may have just noticed the U there creeping in, the umlaut with the two dots over the top of the U. This works slightly different to the other letters that we've gone through. If you didn't know already, there's actually no V in Pinyin. There's no V in Chinese. So when you type V in here, it's going to give you the umlaut with the two dots over the top. It's just replacing the letter V. And then the rest works exactly the same way. If you type a number, one to four, afterwards it's going to give you the corresponding tone. If you are interested in those interactive subtitles, don't forget to turn on the bell notification or go over and subscribe to our email so you're the first person to know. Okay, thanks. See ya.